Richard, thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us. We really appreciate it today. No worries. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your role at BP. At BP, I work in the uh, central economics team in the head office. Um, my specialism is refining industry. Um, but I, um, and I mainly, my main core task is to provide uh, insight and analysis in the refining business on the short, medium and long term. Um, uh, and that's, that's, that helps with budgeting decisions, helps with uh, portfolio investment decisions and long term strategy. Um, in the team I also get involved in, in uh, general energy economics and I manage the company's statistical review of world energy and a key contributor to the energy outlook. So in your view, what factors are driving refining margins today? Um, I would say there are three main factors driving the market right now. Um, the first is we've had a period of extraordinarily strong oil demand growth. So we've had demand growth between 2015 and 2017 averaging 1.7 million barrels per day. So that's 600,000 barrels a day above the long-term average. And um, I think that's primarily because we had this big drop in oil prices in 2014, sort of stimulated demand, in, particularly in the importing countries. Um, we also see strong demand growth this year, driven more by economic growth. So we've had uh, several years of strong growth. A second factor um, we is been, has been deteriorating refining availability in Latin America and Africa. We've seen countries such as Venezuela, Mexico, Nigeria running at very, very low levels of availability. And this has tightened, tightened the market for the rest of the world. And so the rest of the world is having to produce more to, to sort of offset um, that. So that's been a, another big factor. And um, the third factor is we've also had a period of quite low levels of net refining capacity additions. So we've had some closures here in Europe. We've had some closures in Japan in recent years. We've also had a, a drop-off in the building of new refineries in countries such as India and China. So if you take the last three years, 2015 to 2017, we've seen only 500,000 barrels per day roughly each year of new capacity come online. That's around half the long-term average. Okay, so uh, do you see the MARPOL regulations as having an effect on this? And if so, how will the industry adapt? Uh, I think it will have a, um, a um, significant imp impact on the refining market. Um, it, it sort of depends a lot on, on, on the shipping industry as well, how they choose to adapt. Um, there, there is, uh, of course, in 2020, you have this decision, do the ships choose to install a scrubber and run high sulfur fuel oil, or do they rely on low sulfur fuel? Um, most consensus uh, projections uh, expect that the, at least in the be beginning of the transition, that is only going to be a part of the market will be using scrubbers. So uh, the, it does beg the question, what will, what will we do for the, the rest of the demand? Um, but at BP, we are pretty confident that the, the system, the refining system, the trading system is flexible enough to be able to provide the majority of, of, of 0.5 sulfur fuel oil to, to meet the demand. What is the long-term future of oil demand and what effects will that have on refining? Looking out further, so there's something we discuss and uh, think about a lot in, in our energy outlook, which looks out to 2040. Um, in that, we have a number of scenarios. In our evolving transition scenario, um, we project that oil demand will, will continue to grow, but gradually slowing uh, over our outlook. Um, so growing around 13 million barrels per day from our base year, in um, 2016 to reach 109 million barrels per day in 2040. From your keynote speech, you, offered, you answered a few questions from the audience and uh, you had a bit of interaction there. What do you feel is the general consensus or you know, the underlying feeling within the industry at the moment? I think um, f for most of the people I've um, been talking to and for most of the speeches there, I think there's a growing recognition that, um, that the refining industry now uh, has to act. I mean that um, there's a lot of talk about you know integration with petrochemicals. There's a lot of talk about um, um, integration with biofuels. Um, you know um, cleaner uh, cleaner fuels, cleaner uh, using clean hydrogen to desulfurize. A, a number of different initiatives, all, all to to sort of help this low carbon goal. So oil demand is um, rising to around 109 million barrels per day by 2040 in the evolving transition scenario. But we see the pace of demand slowing. 
Um, we see the slowdown is driven mainly by improving of vehicle efficiency um, um, as we go forward and potentially also penetration of electric vehicles. For refining, therefore, um, you know, we see potentially a slowdown in refinery um, growth, refinery throughput growth, also um, squeezed out by competing fuels. So we, um, so, um, we have natural gas liquids growing strongly in the US and the Middle East, and we have growing biofuels. So for the refining industry, it does look like um, there's going to be a challenge with relatively limited growth. And, and with many uh, emerging economies choosing to build new capacity, it does mean for the existing refining system, they may have to adjust and make room for these new refineries coming on as well. So it does all look like a pretty challenging environment going forward. Do you think that um, forums like the ERTC, conferences like this, with all these different players getting together, do you think that helps with the challenges ahead? I, I def definitely think, think that. Um, and I think sometimes when you've been doing the same thing for, for a number of years, you can get stuck in, in, in a certain way of thinking, in certain patterns. And so it does help, help when you get someone coming from a slightly different side of the industry to come in and say, well, no, actually, things are changing. Um, so I just think it is sort of a wake-up call for, for, for many people. Um, and I'm sure even when you have, you know, even when you're kind of sitting next to your competitors, or whether that be mm. in the audience or on a panel, as an mm. industry, a lot more can be um, accomplished when you're working together towards a single goal. Yeah, I think you can you, you can share your your thoughts, um, um, and that's why I like coming to to these events. You know, you share with other experts, uh, learn about new ways of thinking, new developments in the market. Absolutely, so it's a very important role for the conferences like these. Yeah. Do you um, have you been to any of the WRA conferences before? No, this is the first one I've been to. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. Is it, and and um, you, I believe you're speaking tomorrow. Is there anything yes. else you're looking forward to over the ERTC? Yeah, I'm very interested to, to learn about how refineries are adapting to the challenge of, of, of MARPOL specification coming in. Um, we've been spending a long time thinking about it, so I would like to see how theory is going to be translated into practice. Um, and um, I'm also interested to learn m m more about petrochemicals because it's becoming clearer from our projections that petrochemicals is going to become more and more important to the refining industry. Thank you for your time today. Thank you very much. Enjoyed it.